Kyle Kalinske is a liar. Apologies for the bad voice today, but I've got a cold. Of all the things, who'd have thought cold season, you get a cold. But you know what? I'll take a cold over being Kyle Kalinske any day, because he's a lying sack. And we're going to talk about why he's a lying sack right now. This is a video he made about civil rights class canceled over discomfort in Florida. Yeah, that the lies just are rapid fire, so get ready for a lot of stopping. So one of the things that's been happening in Florida is this, like, crackdown on wokeness led by Ron DeSantis. Yeah, um, good. You know, the argument they make is like, hey, man, the left has gone way too far. Cancel culture has gone way too far. Wokeness has gone way too far. And so now you have in our classrooms, they're teaching white kids to, to be... To feel bad because they are yep. white. They learn that, that what doing. their people were uh, were enslaving people and treating people terribly. And That is not why they're teaching them to be feel bad. They're teaching white kids to feel bad because they're white. Not because they enslaved anyone, but because they're white. And that makes them inherently racist. Inherently evil. It, it's entirely that things you can't control about your body make you a bad person. It has nothing to do with slavery. That's used as one of the crowbars, but the crux of it is not, oh, we learned that we learned that people that we aren't, that might have been our descendants or might not have, oh, those people might have had slaves that might have been black. No, that's not what's going on. They're saying, so you're they white, wanna... you're white, that makes you racist, period. That's what's happening. Stop lying. The lies just, mm, right from the get-go. Make white people feel bad about that. And they want to basically teach reverse racism in, instead of being, you know, colorblind and seeing everybody equally. Yeah, what you should do. You should not care what someone looks like. You should care about the content of their character. You should care about what they act like. You should care about what happens when they actually take action, whenever they do things. It doesn't matter what someone looks like. It matters how they treat others. And if you are an abuser, if you are violent, if you are mean, if you are dangerous, evil, then you deserve to be treated poorly for that. You deserve to be treated as a pariah. But if you're kind and gentle and caring and so on, you don't even have to be gentle. As long as you do not treat people badly, you don't deserve bad things. It's about how you behave. It's not about what you look like. It's not about who you are genetically. It's not about these factors out of your control. It's about what you do with the factors in your control. These are the arguments that they make. Um, when it comes to LGBTQ issues, they say, well, we're teaching gender confusion to our children, and so you could have up. a perfectly normal you know, male student, and the teacher gets a hold of them and <coughs> makes them, are you sure you're male? Do you want to try out the opposite? Like that is exactly what happens. They take, and it happens over a long period of time, and they don't say it outright like he does. He is making an argument to absurdity, basically. He's saying that these teachers are like, oh, you're, you, you, you want to try being a girl sometime? They don't do that. They're groomers. Grooming is a process that takes place over months or even years. It's a long game. It is not as simple as the teacher goes, oh, you're a boy? You sure? You want to try to change that? How about we try to change that? They relish in the fact that they can take these young people and they can manipulate them. They can gaslight and abuse them mentally for months or years into changing who they are to this to whatever they aren't like oh you you're a you're a boy maybe you should try being a girl and and they get off on it they and you don't have to believe me you can go poke through libs of tiktok on twitter no shortage of videos from tiktok of teachers saying this exact thing oh my kids my, my kids they came, they came out, and I was so proud of them. My, my children, they, I, I was talking to them, and they were like, are you a boy or a girl? And I was like, huh, what do you think? Like, I don't really know. 
That's the point. Ah! That's what they do. They fuck with these kids' heads. They fuck with them and they enjoy it. That is exactly what happens. And to just try to reduce it to, oh, the teacher just one day says, oh, you're a boy, you, you, you want to change that? That's not what's happening. But Kyle doesn't know this because Kyle is an idiot who doesn't actually pay attention to what's going on. He has no clue what he's talking about. This is the stuff that, they, again, they argue this, right? Um, and so they've done various... Uh, he put that argument in their mouths. ...bills in their mind to try to correct this issue. So you have, like, the Stop Woke go. Act is one of them. And um, the uh, what's known as the Don't Say Gay Law... I now, I want to point out, he said what's known as the don't say gay law. What's known as. So, he is admitting that he knows it's not the don't say gay bill, that that's just the colloquial name attached to it by some people. I think the Come actual on. name is like parental rights and education law or something like that. Well, Yeah, okay. What these things become in practice is very different, right? So, in practice, the don't say gay law has now manifested He's going to lie now. Fested in a way where you can't, if you're a teacher and you're in a same-sex marriage, you can't put a picture of you and your spouse on the desk. Because then, you know, a kid might ask who's that. It might open up a conversation about what being gay is. This is a lie. This is an outright lie. The law does not do this. The law does not prevent gay people from putting pictures of their gay spouses on their desks. It does not prevent gay people from saying they're gay. It does not prevent them from saying they have a husband, or saying that they're married to a man, or that they're partnered to a man, or whatever. That is not stopped by the so-called don't say gay law. The don't say gay law says if you've got children, kindergarten through third grade in elementary school, you, a teacher, are not allowed to have sexual conversations with those children. Now, to keep in mind, and just for people who are outside of the country or who don't like to do the math in their head, third grade tops out maximum age, nine years old, unless someone was held back. For I don't, I don't know why they would do that, but third grade, nine years old, prepubescent sex education is taught typically around fourth or fifth grade. So we're talking about prepubescent, pre-sex ed, literal children. Children that do not know anything about sex, don't need to know anything about sex because they're not going to be having sex. And these teachers are just relishing in the fact that they can have these complex gender discussions with them. Those sexual discussions are banned, but saying gay or saying that you're gay or saying that you have a gay spouse or saying that gayness exists, that sometimes men, there are men who love other men, that, that's about as far as you can go with it. But here's the other thing, and this goes outside of the law itself into more of a philosophical issue. Why does this kindergarten through third grade teacher want to be having conversations with their children about their personal lives. That is not acceptable. It doesn't matter if they're gay or not. It doesn't matter if they're gay. doesn't matter if they're straight. Teachers should not be talking to students about their personal lives and especially their sex lives. There you have no business doing this. Period. And that's the ultimate concern, is that teachers should not be doing this to children. But they're overlooking all of this and going, oh, it means that gay people can't put pictures of their gay spouse on their desk. That's what, that's what it really turns into. No, that is not what it turns into. That's what some leftists have lied, outright lied, and they have media power to reinforce the lie through repetition. That is the lie that has gone around. But Kyle didn't actually read the damn law. So he doesn't know that they're lying because he won't do that small amount of research before he goes out in front of millions of people on the internet and says, this is a fact. This is what they're doing. He is lying. Right, and so they're like, can't do it. Used to only apply up to like third or fourth grade. Now they just expanded it to 12th grade. Even high schoolers, you can't have this. They expand now I didn't get that memo that they expanded it to 12th grade, but I would love to know 
when they expanded it to 12th grade because the law that was passed, the, the law was supposed to be for K through 3. But even if it goes up to 12th grade, your teachers are still not supposed to be having extracurricular sexual conversations with children or adolescents, teenagers. They're not supposed to be doing it. They're not supposed to be having sexual conversations with children or teenagers in the first place. They're not supposed to be having these discussions. That is not what a teacher is hired to do. A teacher is hired to teach math, science, chemistry, civics, pretty much anything but this whole gender theory bullshit that they teach in some of these colleges. And guess what? If, if it's a college level course, you know what? Okay, whatever. But we're talking, oh, 12th grade? Oh, it's so horrible that teachers can't say that all these things to students that they're not supposed to be saying to them all the way up through 12th grade. What a horrible fucking thing. It's one thing to teach it within the curriculum, within the sex ed curriculum in the health classes. It's another when the teacher's like, hey, I got I got a secret little gender club that, that we meet and we talk about how we can cut your penis off and cut your titties off, Johnny, and, and, and whatever girl name you want to pick. It's conversation. One of the DeSantis laws makes it so that all... And it still does not all do the that. books that are in a school library or in a classroom have to be pre-approved <clears throat> by Line a number state two. department. And so now you have teachers okay, who are like true. taking all their, like emptying their bookshelves because they don't have pre-approval for the books. Even if the books are totally okay. benign. All right. So, all right. This is where he lies again. Okay. He's telling the technical truth. Teacher, yes, books have to be approved. Teachers have to pull the books and they have to be reviewed for approval. The lie is coming. But yes, they, they went through these books and there's a reason they did it because there were... <clears throat> there were literal graphic novels of gay dick sucking in elementary school libraries. That's not what he wants you to think, but that's what was actually happening. And they weren't just in elementary school libraries, they were in a lot of libraries. So, we're talking about basically gay hentai. <laughs> really poorly drawn, but... Gay hentai, I've seen the pictures on the internet. You can go look them up for yourself. It's literally drawings of men sucking dick, ex explanations, detailed graphic sexual explanations of men sucking dick and how it feels. That's what it was. That's what they're trying to get out of the schools. Now, the process was the books get pulled, they get looked at for content, they get on an approved list, they go right back where they were. The vast majority of the books that were pulled and were held for further review were found to be pornographic, or the, rather the, the vast majority of the books that were pulled and not put back were found to contain pornographic material. And we're talking about elementary schools too. I mean, we're not just talking about a high schooler. Like I can understand delving into some degree of sexuality in high school, but we're talking elementary schools here. We're talking about prepubescent children. And that's what they're always dodging when they make these stupid videos. It's prepubescent kids. It's single digit age groups. You're not even talking about kids that are 10 yet. You're talking about kids that shouldn't know anything about this stuff. And the books literally have drawings of it. Now, what happens when kids find a book like that? Well, what's going to happen is you're going to have a bunch of eight, nine-year-olds or younger, potentially, that see this book, gives them ideas. Next thing you know, you've got eight, nine-year-olds sucking each other off because they saw it in these books. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, but, but guys, no, no, wait a minute. But remember, the left's defense of this is that it's totally okay for these books to be there because it's... Huh? I don't know. Oh, it, it's uh, it's racist to take them away. It's sexist to take them away. They don't really have an argument because it's you don't find a single one of them saying anything when they're confronted. There was a, uh, I don't remember who it was, but there was some congressional blah, 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 where someone asked all of the leftists in Congress or the Senate or something, this book contains explicit pornographic stuff and is in elementary schools. These specific books, I don't hear any of you saying that you support these books. I want you to stand up right now and declare your support for these specific books. Crickets. Silence. Because they know that they're wrong. They 
fucking know that they're wrong. They know it. But it's about the ideology. It's not about what's right or wrong. It's not about what's good or bad. It's not about the safety or health of the children at all. It's about the message, the agenda. It's about pushing political crowbars that make good little slave Democrat voters that can't get off the plantation. Now they come out and they say, DeSantis in particular says, bro, I'm just trying to get porn out of our second grade classrooms, bro. What are you in favor yep. of porn in second grade classrooms, bro? I mean, it's and literally of course, that's, porn. You know, it's smug, it's dismissive, and it's a total dodge. As the No, it's true. It's true and you don't like it. And you've never looked into it to see that these books exist and are, in fact, in the classrooms. Reality of the situation. So here we have another example <coughs> of what's happened with this new um, environment and climate in Florida. So blah, blah, uh, blah. this is in Yahoo News. Florida students' discomfort causes cancellation of civil rights class. Now, I've not heard of this one, but it's not elementary schools. Notice there's a shift here. We're no longer talking about an elementary school. You'll see. Wow. All right, let's watch. In the midst of the civil rights movement, two small schools in Brevard County, Florida, merged to form what is now known as Eastern Florida State College. The goal of the new college was to offer affordable tuition and to provide educational opportunities to the black residents in the area. Sixty years later, it is now Governor Ron DeSantis. Ron DeSantis is Florida, and Eastern Florida State College is making headlines for this. Canceling a U.S. government class after a student cited discomfort during a discussion on civil rights. It's a college. It's one college, okay? It's not an elementary school. It's not a middle school. It's not a high school, it's a college. We're already talking about something very different. And the college canceled the class due to students' discomfort? Okay, the college made a decision. One college made one decision. How many other colleges have one done student, this? One singular. Oh wait, that's right. They only have one example to point to. And oh, this is that. This is what these laws do. Look, all the colleges are canceling all the civil rights classes because this one has done it, and no others have done it. And we have no other examples because it isn't happening anywhere else. Look at this one outlier. Look at the trend it proves. Stupid. Now we don't know who the student was or the exact context of the discussion, but what happened was the class was canceled under the umbrella of Governor DeSantis' Stop Woke Act, which specifically bans the teaching of any lesson, especially those about race and racism, if the lesson makes any student feel discomfort. And here's what that looks like in real life. See, I'd have to, I'd have to read the act, but somehow I doubt that that's actually true. The topic was uh, civil rights. No, no specific bit of it, just in general, as far as I'm aware. And so the teacher basically had to cancel this class of 20, about 20 students in total uh, because of the students' discomfort. Due to ongoing legal challenges, the Stop Woke Act has not been implemented at Florida colleges and universities yet. But confusion and concern are already widespread as teachers from elementary to high school to college reevaluate the way they teach and apparently what they teach. Okay, hold on. So. Let's look it up. All right. Let's look up the actual Stop Woke Act. Is this it? I don't think that's it. Let's see what the actual thing says. Let's see. Okay. <clears throat> let's read this. I don't have the text in front of me, but it would be long and I don't have time. So let's read this because I remember this now. All right. Just to be clear. Law prohibits teaching certain concepts. Remember, prohibited teachings are... Members of one race, color, national origin, or sex are morally superior to members of another. Oh, you can't teach that one race is superior to another? Oh, wait, the Wokies want to stop that? Sounds an awful lot like the KKK, doesn't it? A person by virtue of his or her race, color, national origin, or sex is inherently racist, sexist, or oppressive, whether consciously or unconsciously. So they can't teach the bullshit unconscious bias thing where immutable characteristics about you make you a bad person. Oh, what a fucking tragedy! A person's moral character or status as either privileged or oppressed is necessarily determined by their race, color, national origin, or sex. Again, things they can't control. You can't say that they are privileged or oppressed solely based on that because guess what? There's a lot of poor white people. There's a lot of rich black people. Oh, what a shock. Oh, what a, what a, oh, that's just terrible that they can't teach that people are bad, that they can't teach the original sin of the blue church. 
Members of one race, color, national origin, or sex cannot and should not attempt to treat others without respect to race... Okay, they worded that a little poorly, but they're trying to say that they should not attempt to treat others disrespectfully. What? I, that's worded poorly, but we're going to skip it because it, it's just worded poorly. <clears throat> a person, by virtue of his race, color, national origin, or sex, bears responsibility for or should be discriminated against or receive adverse treatment because of actions committed in the past by other members of the same immutable characteristics. So you can't say beat up Whitey because Whitey's great-great-great-grandpa might have had slaves. Maybe. Okay. Oh, what a, what a horrible thing that they can't teach that. Oh, oh I'm, I'm, I'm just, oh, think of the child's, oh no. A person by virtue of his or her race, color, national origin, or sex should be discriminated against or receive adverse treatment to achieve diversity, equity, or inclusion. So you can't teach discrimination. You can't teach discrimination against people. Oh, how, how tragic. <clears throat> a person by virtue of his or her race, color, sex, or national origin bears personal responsibility for, must feel guilt, anguish, or other forms of psychological distress because of actions in which the person played no part, committed in the past by other members of the same race, color, national origin, or sex. Did, who, who wrote this? Come on, man. You can't even write the words correctly. What the crap? But yeah, uh, such virtues as merit, excellence, hard work, fairness, neutrality, objectivity, and racial colorblindness are racist or sexist, or were created by members of a particular race, color, natural, or blah, 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 to oppress others. They can't teach that being on time and being a good person is racist. What a fucking tragedy. Okay, and there's something about a federal judge blocking it. Why did the federal judge block it? Because it's too vague. Now, I can understand that. I can understand that the law might be too vague. But, in general, none of that is that you just heard is something that... Uh, let's see. Students have a right to receive information. The problem is that the information is a lie. It's not information if it's a lie. There's a lot of stuff like that that is a lie. Academic freedom, sports marketplace of ideas. Here's the problem, okay? The problem is if it's a state-funded school, it's not a private school. If it's a state-funded school, then any speech by the school is state-funded speech. It is the state saying it to the citizen. So, yeah, I don't know about this whole Ministry of Truth thing, but in general, it, it, the case has not been made here for... Um, stopping this. So far, what I'm seeing, and I'm libertarian, so I have a little bit of difficulty with trying to silence people in general, but if it's something that says the schools can't teach this, that the state is publicly paying for, then all they're really doing is complying with the Civil Rights Act of 1964, and I think Title IX, which says that you can't discriminate against people based on certain characteristics. So, uh, Kyle... Uh, In the meantime, a college that? established during the Civil Rights Era has to figure out whether it can even teach students about the Civil Rights Era. So, what were they teaching? Because this is the question. All they're saying is a student was uncomfortable, so he canceled the class. What were you teaching in that class? Were you teaching that Martin Luther King said this, that, and the other? Were you teaching about Malcolm X? Or were you teaching that white people are bad people? But they don't tell you that. Notice they didn't interview the student that's the reason for the class getting canceled notice that they only interviewed students who were like i don't understand why they had to cancel the whole class just because somebody was in there so we're not getting enough information here so this whole part just does not ring very true so this is the climate that's been created now again oh god um, i'm only half the law not this trash. Yet, but what you have is professors and you know administrative and then he admits the law isn't even implemented yet So the law People is not even in the law is not in effect, and no, dude, do I ha even have to argue this? The law is not even in effect. They don't know how to handle it in a situation where you get a complaint from a conservative student, and so they're like, I don't know, shut it down. Well, if you have a complaint from a student that they're being taught that they're bad people because they're white, I think they know how to handle it under the law. It's pretty goddamn clear. They don't want to get sued. They don't. They don't want there to be legal repercussions, so they're going to play it safe road. That was the same thing that happened with the, you know, the teachers who had to empty their bookshelves. It's like, they don't know. Are they running afoul of the law? This stuff hasn't been approved by any department yet. 
in Florida. So what do they do? I don't know. Play it safe. Cover up your. No, all of the teachers had to empty all of their bookshelves. All of the books had to be looked at and content checked and approved before they went back on the bookshelves in the elementary schools. Bookshelf or empty out your bookshelf. This is what's happening. And some guy, some substitute or something, saw all the empty shelves in the library one day, took a video and went, look at all the books that got banned, and got fired because that was a lie. And so it is supremely ironic that the same people <coughs> who scream about the First Amendment and freedom of speech and, you know, battling in the marketplace of ideas, they're effectively censoring the ideas that they don't agree with. And by the way, some of those ideas happen to be straight from the civil rights era. We've already covered why that was a lie. By the way, if we're going to play this game, why can't we flip it back on them? You want to talk about like, oh, I feel discomfort over this, you know, this particular class. Okay. Somebody could easily say, I feel discomfort over the over glorification of the founding fathers. And the reason you can't do that is because, A, there's not a law that says the public schools, the government can't tell white people that they're racist for being white. Or there's a law that says that, but there's not a law that says uh, you can't tell people that the founding fathers... You can't be too too happy about the founding fathers. This, the law is not there. He's taking the straw man and then pulling that to absurdity. So Kyle Kalinske is a liar who doesn't know what he's talking about. And then he takes all the bullshit he made up and extends it to make it even more ridiculous. What a shock. Right? Somebody can say that. Somebody can say, hey, they were slave owners and you guys are pretending like they're heroes and they never did anything wrong. They could say that and they'd be stupid. If we're using the same sort of censorious logic, why wouldn't you be able to say that? Why wouldn't I be able to say teaching that Ronald Reagan's policies and his presidency in the 1980s was one of the best in U.S. history. Uh, that's not good. Why would I be able to say? Because teaching that Ronald Reagan's policies weren't good is not racist, is not targeting people based on immutable characteristics like their skin color or their gender. Um, but this is too difficult for these lefty woke tards to actually figure out. They just Oh, no, I popped my last brain cell trying to understand that, so I'm just going to repeat the message. Teaching. Look, he look, he's rebooting that over the here. The nuking of Hiroshima and Nagasaki and killing Japanese civilians in World War II. Teaching that that was benign or good. Well, that's offensive. Well, first of all, it was good. It's bad that all that death had to happen, but it stopped World War II. <clears throat> and if you know your history, you know that there was about to be a series of massive bloodbaths. A lot more people were going to die if those nukes didn't go off. But that's just facts. That's that's historical fact. So, I don't even know... That's like the worst argument you could come up with, dude. And that one genuinely God, is offensive. Saying that like nuking babies, douche. civilians... Oh, it's just, we had to do it, bro. We had to do it. We did. Look at this motherfucker. He doesn't even know what war is. All right, nuking people. Nuking people was bad. Okay, but war is bad. War is hell. War is not something that we ever want to have to deal with again. Well, some of us don't. But these people, like this guy, this guy's never been in a fight. This guy has never, he has no fucking clue what he's talking about. War is not the same thing as peace. It just, I don't even want to go there. If you don't know the difference between how war goes and how peacetime goes... Maybe you shouldn't be on the internet. Maybe you need to go outside and maybe do a little bit of research into what World War II was actually like. We're talking about millions upon millions of people being killed by other people in really gruesome ways. I'll tell you what. Here you go. Go watch Saving Private Ryan. If you can watch Saving Private Ryan all the way through and still be like, yeah, I want that to continue. I, it, I, if those nukes hadn't dropped, you know, then it would have been great. More people would die just like that. that that's fucking great. That's the leftist position on this. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll just inch towards the center or the right because, you know, I, I don't want to be part of that. Why can't you flip it? Why can't you say that? If you're going to play this censorious game, believe me, the left has many, many more things they could point at where they say, that sounds crazy, man. I don't like that. Let me be clear. This guy's protesting a civil rights law. This guy's protesting a law that says you can't treat people differently because of their race. That you can't tell people they're bad because of their race. And his logic for it 
is absolutely off the charts insane. And now he's going, oh, if you want to play that game, well, we can censor all this other stuff that has nothing to do with immutable characteristics. We could just arbitrarily censor other stuff. My man, are you for or against civil rights? Are you, are you for or against people being treated equally, not based on the color of their skin? I mean, this is a pretty straightforward question. But the problem with lefties is it depends. It's like, uh, oh yeah, I want everyone to be treated equally, but I want some people to be treated more equally than others. I mean, Trump was trying to do in his last year in office, he tried to do that patriotic education type thing. Where it was like, they want to take American exceptionalist propaganda and ramp it up as much as possible. Pump it full of steroids and human growth hormone, force feed it to people. Make kids think like, you know, oh. bro, we're the greatest country in the world ever, and that's just like a fact and stuff, bro. This is what they want to teach in school. If they don't have Donald Trump to beat on, then they got nothing to talk Ironically, about. Ironically, is they yelp that the left is propagandizing God. children. Well, what do you think that is? What do you think that is? Teaching American supremacy? So, America is the best culture on the planet. You may think otherwise for various reasons, but you'd be wrong. In other cultures, they practice female genital mutilation. They cut hands off for stealing instead of having a proper justice system. Mm. They don't have freedom of speech. There are several reasons why other cultures are a lot worse than America. So if you, if you want to act like America isn't exceptional, then you're stupid. Then you don't understand how brutal other cultures actually are. Maybe you need to, I don't know, watch a documentary sometime or maybe go visit another country and see what it's really like because clearly you don't understand what you're talking about. There are a lot of reasons that America has problems, but there's way more reasons that America is vastly superior. There's a reason everybody wants to be here. And if America was so bad, why the hell... Don't they stop crossing the border illegally by the thousands upon thousands daily? I mean, you know, I, I, I could just be way off here, but something tells me that a place that a lot of people want to go, those people must see some kind of benefit of going to that place. And if America's such a bad place, if America is not exceptional, why are so many people wanting to be here? If America is not exceptional, why are all these people like Kyle Kalinske, who have a whole lot of money and a whole lot of clout, all these upper middle class, rich white liberal motherfuckers, why aren't they leaving? Why aren't they getting the fuck out? Why aren't they fucking off somewhere else? Kyle Kalinske, go away. Move out of the United States. If you hate the United States, if America is so unexceptional, if America is so horrible to you, why are you still here? If any of you hate this place so much, get out. There are so many other places that you clearly think are better. You can go to one of those places and not live under the oppressive boot of freedom. Look, bottom line is I don't want to play this game on either side. I don't want to play this game on either side. I don't want the right to be able to censor people on the left when they want to have a conversation about gender issues. They want to have a conversation about civil rights. And I See, this is not about censoring people on the left. It's about not telling students that they're bad because they're white or any race. It's about not telling people they're bad based on things they can never change. It's about not letting the blue church, the religion of the blue church, be taught in public government-funded, government-run schools. It's about the government not being an arm of the Democratic Party. I don't want the left to censor the right. If there's some conservative that has a, you know, a politically incorrect opinion that they express in the classroom, I don't think they should be kicked out. I don't think they should be banned. I don't think they should be fired or whatever. No. But now we've opened the door. Now they're going down this path. And it's basically a battle of propagandists, right? And um, the massive overreach here from DeSantis with the road that they're going on the bottom line is they don't want up. free speech. They don't want an open dialogue. They want to control the narrative and control what's taught in a way that is effectively propaganda. Remember, he's talking about public schools. We're not talking about people talking outside on the sidewalk. We're not talking about speaking at a college or in an auditorium. We're not talking about posting things on the internet. We're talking about public, government-run, government-funded schools. We're talking about the government speech towards the citizens. Very different subject from some student saying, well, I think the Holocaust wasn't real or whatever the stupid thing someone wants to say. 
We're not talking about a student not being able to say something. We're talking about the government not being able to tell you that you're bad because of your race or treat you differently because of your race. Rising people, this let's people read into being over. conservative Republicans. They would swear up and down, no, we're just... Ironically, what he's actually advocating for is to keep the school system set up to where it shovels people into the Democrat Party because Republicans are evil Nazis. We're just trying to make the we're just trying to correct the courses and make them good, right? That's what they would argue. But from their perspective, good is let me make you believe everything I believe, <laughs> right? That's there. Let me. Make or good is let's not teach people they're bad because of the color of their skin. Make you believe and act like Ron DeSantis. That's what they want. That's what he's they want. Losing you to do. it, he can't like, even look, talk. Massive overreach. She's massive, massive overreach. Down. If the civil rights era is controversial. And what's not controversial? Jim Crow? <laughs> is that the argument they make? I don't know. We'll have to hear from them. Ever since Adpocalypse, yeah. when YouTube defunded... All, all right. That's it. Um, that's all I have. Wow, you look stupid, dude. Why does this guy look like such a douche? Like, I know that I'm not exactly some kind of sexy, attractive, you know, big old hunk of meat. But Jesus Christ, this guy almost looks like he goes out of his way to be a douche. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. I'm going to shut this beast down. Oh, my God. Kyle Kalinske's a lying sack of crap. But tell me what you think down in the comments below. I'm Jody Bruce on politics. Bye for now. Sorry you had to watch that.